Okay, so today we're very happy to have Dalmo Mazat visiting us from IES. He's going to be telling us about conformal measure spaces. Conformal measure spaces, indeed. Yes, thank you. Thank please. You yes, thank you for the introduction and for having me in Purdue. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. It's my first time. Very nice campus, very nice people. And yeah, I'm going to be talking about some work in progress, uh, in collaboration between Bonifacio, Peter Kratchuk, and Fred Bal, which is kind of the border between physics, mathematical physics, and mathematics. We, we are trying to say some things about each of these disciplines, but probably it's mostly about mathematics, actually. So bear with me. It's going to be a fairly mathematical talk, but I'll hopefully convince you it has some physical relevance as well. Uh, and the, the main sort of the main point is to give some kind of a newish and useful point of view on the conformal, conformal bootstrap. If you don't know what conformal bootstrap is, I'm going to give you a summary in a, in a, in a second. And uh, so, the, okay, so, so the, the, this is now the first goal to, to, to give a new viewpoint on conformal field theories in conformal bootstrap. And the second goal is to clarify the connection between conformal field theories and hyperbolic manifolds, specifically the spectra of the Laplacian of hyperbolic manifolds. So I'll, I'll say some things about all, all these things. Uh, but just to so just to get a little bit on the same page, what is a conformal bootstrap or what is a what is a CFT or so a con conformal bootstrap is a way to sort of axiomatize CFTs in a way that you can really really explain what a conformal CFT is a conformal filter, and conformal bootstrap is a way to explain to a mathematician what a conformal filter is or what one possible way to explain to a mathematician, and it's actually very useful for computational purposes as well. So this is okay, this is basically the set of axioms. In some sense for, for, for what a for, for what, what CFT is. So it's a conformal filter in D dimension is characterized by a set of local primary operators. So this is another the basic set of data, these local operators OI of X that represent some point like measurements. And importantly they come with a with some data attached to them. The data is the scaling dimension. So each each O has a scaling dimension, which is some real number. So it's usually a positive positive real number. And also spin, where in general, so in general dimension, spin is some irreducible representation of SOD. So if, if, you're, if you're dealing with a with a CFT in D dimensions, this is the representation of SOD. But uh, for example, in three dimensions, it's just a non-negative integer, which is the usual notion of spin. So okay, so this is this is a piece of data number one, and then there is a second piece of data, which is the so-called operator product expansion. OPE, which allows you to take a product of, e, of, of two such local operators and expand it in a complete set of local operators. And the, this defines the structure constants of the, of the operator algebra. It's some they are symmetric structure constants. So you can permit the CIJKs. So this is a commutative algebra. And these CIJKs, they are also equal to the three point functions, O, I, O, zero. Okay. Okay, so far, have I already lost some? Yeah, but I think. So this is a Euclidean. Uh, so D is space Euclidean time. D, 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 D is the dimension of the Euclidean space time. And uh, just to, to to be clear, the set of OIs is accountable. Uh, in in the in the night in the usual. Yeah, yes, it's usually accountable, but there are some pathological examples like like Liouville theory where it's not countable. <laughs> we, we we want to think about the set is countable. For, for, for like for a compact so called compact non computer is countable. Okay, any other questions about one or two? Okay, then, then and then three is associativity. So that's a way to it's, it's a way to constrain the set of data, right? We we have this data, scaling dimension space <laughs> and the CIJK, the structure constants. And this set of data is not arbitrary, but it's constrained by associativity. And a way to implement associativity of this product is to consider the four-point correlation function, O I, O J, O K L, and expand it in two different ways using the using the O P. So either you do the product on O I, O J, O K L, then you get sort of this kind of cartoon where you're using O I, O J into M, O K K L into M. But on the other hand, you can also do the expansion like that, where you use O I, O L. Okay. So everything commutes in Euclidean signature. You can you know, permute any way you want. And you can do the OP in this way, I L J K. And this gives you the equation. This is the conformal bootstrap equation or cross equation. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's, called, it's called bootstrap essentially because you're, you're, you seem to be getting something out of nothing, which is like imposing some. Very general physical principles like conformal invariance and unitarity, you're getting some logical information. That's why it's called a bootstrap. And uh, it, 
equation takes the following form. So it's kind of bilinear in the seed because you get a C for each of these vertices. You're summing over all these countable bases and the uh, product of these two Cs. And then there is a function which is called a conformal block. So this G here and G over there is called a conformal block. And it's, it's, it's more or less explicit. It's just some function that you can compute in any dimension. It's universal, it doesn't depend on the theory. Okay. So now you. So can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For those of us who are theorists but don't work in this field, can you give us an example of you know something like find nuclear scattering or nuclear whatever it is to identify what these different things are? I mean, why you want to do this if right. you're used to the elementary stuff? Well, you, I, 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 I want to say for find nuclear scattering is, is elementary compared to this. <laughs> Uh, well, it, it, it is a it is a framework that allows you to, to study uh, uh, various quantum field theories, so uh, which are conformal. Yeah. So that then there, I guess basically asking what are examples of conformal field theories which are not free. Yeah. So so there there are various there are various examples in two dimensions. For example, the, the critical two dimensional Ising model, the minimal models. The, in three dimensions, there is the three three D Ising model, which hasn't been solved, unlike the two D Ising model. And there's there's a whole zoo of uh, interacting conformal field theories in four dimensions. There are there are these there are conformal gauge theories. So if you if you start increasing the number of number of quarks, you you get into the conformal window, and that defines that defines for your conformal field theories. But so uh, the standard model is not a conformal field theory. Right. Also, the, the, this little thing. Did you really mean that it's true that the Euclidean uh, space everything can use, but did, did you really mean that you would arbitrarily use them because there are domain of convergence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that, 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 that's right. So the, the, these this, uh, these equations converge basically everywhere except for a set of zero measure in the set of points. There are some very special configurations of the four points where it doesn't converge. But... Good question. Okay, but so somehow the the dream that has become that is becoming with more and more of a reality over the last decade. Is that these equations may actually be enough to solve CFTs or to completely characterize conformal field theory? So, for example, you could hope people have made progress towards solving the 3D Ising model, which is a very hard problem in theoretical physics, using just these equations and nothing more. So, you know, one, one dream would be to try to solve the 3D Ising model starting from this and nothing else, or just, just try to prove that. That somehow these constraints are sufficient to characterize CFTs. So there, there are like no other solutions except for CFTs. This so, so so generically, if this is true, then you would expect that the solutions are rigid. You cannot they do not really allow any small deformations. It's completely not obvious from from this formulation, but it may or may not be true. And I mean, we are solving for this CIJK. We are saying the neutral good, 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 yeah. uh, conform blocks are unknown. The conform blocks are known. So look, we are solving for the CIJKs mm -hmm. and also for the scaling. So the conform blocks depend in some very nonlinear way on the scaling on the, on, the, on, the, on the scaling dimensions. Right. So we are trying to solve for this data, but it, it's, bi it's bilinear in the Cs and very nonlinear in the deltas. And another another dream is that. Or, is that there should be no solutions in more than six dimensions. The dimension enters through the conformal blocks. People believe that the only solutions in more than six dimensions are, are free, non interacting theories. But again, it's, but nobody has finished to prove that. So that's not going to prove for super conformal theories. Yeah, 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 yeah. For super conformal, it's kind of trivial because there are no, well, it's not trivial, but there are just no super conformal, even, there's not even symmetry in more than six dimensions that would accommodate for it. So the, the, the sort of the current status, for example, for the 3D Ising model is that the 3D Ising CFT is like an iso. Well, it it is a part of an island that's allowed by these solutions by by these equations, but the island doesn't really shrink all the way to a point unless you start using more and more of these four point functions. Some of the the main issue, in my opinion, is that we don't really have any explicit examples of solutions in more than two dimensions, as we believe that there are all these CFTs that exist, like the conformal. Gauge theories in 4D or the Ising model in 3D or own models, but you know we cannot really con we don't have any machine that would, would output the data to solve these equations. If you just take some random set of C's and random set of deltas, there is no chance it's gonna solve it. So so today I'd somehow like to take a slightly opposite approach to what usually people in the bootstrap, what people in the bootstrap is that they impose these equations and prove bounds 
on the on the data. But today I'd like to ask you know, the opposite question: like, can we come up with some machine, some mathematical machine that guarantees that outputs data that, that is guaranteed to solve the equations? That that's that's the control measure space. Control measure space is, is an example, is a such a machine. Okay, so what's uh, do I mean by the control measure space? Yeah. So the, the, the inspiration comes from the path integral formulation of a of a QFT. So, so, so no, path, path integral is a is a device that guarantees that you, you produce an equal system from uh, am I now allowed to Okay, so what so I, in the rest of the talk I'd like to explain what is the path in the curve for a CFT? How should, how should we think about it, and why it leads to, to to this structure? Why can we use this structure to constrain any conform measure space? So the the first thing that you that you need is just a you can have to be a measure space, but then there is an underlying set for the measure space, which for a quantum field theory you can think of as the set of Field configurations that we are sort of integrating over in the bottom the set of field configurations in RD or alternatively on SD. S SD is they're conformally is a conformal for one to each other. Okay, so that's the that's the set of fields. And uh, then we all assume that we have some measure. So measure measure mu on y. Okay, so this is just a way to assign some positive measures to subsets of y. There's, this, there's some sigma algebra of subsets of y, and to each of them, um, we can assign a measure. Let me normalize it to one. Yes. The, the, the uh, field configuration, the space of field configuration, should I think of them as space of some function? Not, not, yet, not, 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 not yet. No. It is, for, now, for now, I think this is just a general measure space. Just a I mean just a point it's in several major spaces so, so far. But <laughs> in, in the in the applications of QF, in the cases where, where this has been constructed for quantum field theory, it is some space of distributions in RD or functions. Usually it's a space of distribution, but we, we, we won't need that today. Okay, so but, sorry, for, for your application, the set is not countable. I should have in mind some sort of that. Oh, yeah, the set, that's not, that will not be countable, but some, sometimes it will be a manifold. Yeah, so I was I was about to say, it, it will be, be a, some the, for, the, for the application of hyperbolic manifold, so Y is a manifold. For the application of QFT, Y is not a manifold. Y is this set of distributions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so in particular, you can have an you can think of you now observables. Observables are just measurable functions. There are functions that you can integrate on this y. There are fun, there are functions from y to c, and you can talk about the expectation value of, of f, and uh, to be just the you know the the, the integral the path integral. Okay. So this this defines for me the this integral brackets. Okay, so so far it's just a measure space. What does conformal mean? Conformal mean, means that this, there is this very special nice group, SO1, D plus one, which is the group of conformal maps, <laughs> conformal <laughs> automorphisms of the sphere or RD in D dimensions. But it's a finite dimensional E, uh, it's an SM3 group. And I, I want that it acts on Y. So it, there's an action of this group. <laughs> Any element of G moves, moves around points of Y and it preserves the measure. So when you, when it takes a measure, measure of a subset to some subset, the measure of the of the image has to be the same as the measure of the thing. So there I think so this this is this is why this is what implements this conformality of this measure space. I mean, so I'm not really saying anything deep, I'm just this is like a very simple. It's so, so far we just have a Measure space is an action, it's an action of, of this group. And finally, I would like this action to be ergodic. And ergodic basically means that it 
that is that this action explores the whole space in some sense, the whole, whole space Y, be more precise. And Godek is a statement that we have a measurable subset of Y, which is G invariant. G invariant. Then, then the measure of Y is either zero or the full measure. Full measure is one. It's normalizing one. Okay, so bas basically, sorry, Y prime. The cycle is irreducible. Mm -hmm. The action is irreducible. The action is irreducible. There is no subset on Y that's preserved under the action. Right? Irreducible. It's, well, it's yeah, okay. it's ergodic. Yeah, sure. Okay, so just some co comments. Yeah, I'm not really trying to construct this explicitly for any quantum field theory. But it's been constructed for some quantum field theory. This, this, is, this is the realm constructed quantum field theory, which was quite popular in the 70s, maybe even 80s, but uh, fell out of fashion. Um, but this, you know, this measure space is some kind of like a non perturbative dual invariant object. So if you have different UV descriptions of the same IRCFT, then Y should still be the same same thing. The different duality frames are like different coordinate systems on the space on the Based on fields. Uh, it probably exists for some interesting interacting CFDs like the 3D Ising model or the ON models, but maybe I'm not really saying that it should really exist for all CFDs. We, we, we'll see one, one criterion maybe later on for which CFDs it, it probably exists. Okay, but yeah, so come from measure space is just a measure space that satisfies one requirement. And, and the point of the talk is that in any control measure space, these equations are true. And they can be used to, to constrain the spectra of the, the measure space. Where I'll, I'll tell you what the spectrum is in a second. What, what, what? I think maybe the most interesting thing that came out of our our work is that there are simple examples. But there are simple examples of conformal measure spaces which come from hyperbolic manifolds. Yeah. That that part is not new, but the part that is new is that we can use these bootstrap equations to to constrain hyperbolic manifolds in a completely rigorous way, or rigorous even by by mathematical standards. So what is the what is the connection to hyperbolic manifolds? Well, the simpler hyperbolic manifold is the is the hyperbolic space. So for me, this is going to be d plus one, d plus one dimension hyperbolic, say upper half upper half space. Uh, and and g so now this group and so one d plus one acts on this by isometries. And so to build a hyperbolic manifold. You pick some discrete subgroup gamma of G. So gamma is some discrete subgroup. And you consider this quotient. Yeah. Quotient of the hyperbolic space by gamma. If gamma if gamma has no self elements of finite order, then this is a manifold. If, if it has some elements of finite order, it's an orbital, then things will still be more, more or less be valid. So this is this is how you can build any connected complete hyperbolic B plus one manifold. Because you've done this quotient, the group no longer acts on M. So you kind of by the, by the splitting motion, you, you've broken the, the isometric so there's there's there could be some isometry, but the isometric group of this is finite, it's just a finite group. It's definitely not, not this whole G. But there is a way to, to introduce G again, or an action of G, by considering this uh, this uh, space. So in, instead of instead of quotienting the space by gamma, you can just quotient the group by gamma. Now this is a this is a manifold of the same dimensionality as the dimension of the group, which is more than the, 
this and the, you can think of it as, as the manifold, that is like a fiber bundle where each fiber is a copy of the of the SOD plus one. So this H, HD plus one is G mod SOD plus one, because SOD plus one is a stabilizer of a point in HD. So this is just like this is the orbit stabilizer theorem. So, so you can I can like build this picture. You start with G, you quotient on the left, you get our space Y. Quotient on the right by S O D plus one. You just get the hyperbolic space. And if you quotient by both, so on the left by gamma and on the right by S O D plus one, this is the manifold. So, so this guy is the manif is a is a fiber bundle where over the manifold or each fiber is a copy of S O D plus one. Do you mind giving going through the example of the two D C S D? So you have Three hyperbolic space, which is like the Euclidean ABS, right? Uh, in small curry pack. You take a discrete subgroup of it, you quotient by that. Yeah, so those are like some sort of Euclidean manifolds that come up in three dimensional gravity. Mm -hmm. What is it? G mod gamma or quotient gamma? Up or down? This? Yeah, in, the, in this example. Um, well, it's, it's a quotient of the, of the what we call Euclidean ABS. It doesn't really play a role in ADS. I mean, I, I don't know what the connection to ADS CSD is. It's, it's no, no, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if quotient yeah, and ADS is that one, right? I mean, the, the, the simplest example is yeah. B plus one, but we, we can do B plus two. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, the yeah, simplest example is B plus one, where this is a hyperbolic two, from a hyperbolic upper half plane. Then this is some, some Riemann surface with the, with the hyperbolic metric. Um, the, 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 the stabilizer at a point in hyperbolic space is SO2, which is the rotations. Mm -hmm. It's especially transparent in the unit disk picture. And, and you know, the, this, this Y is a fiber bundle, it's like a circle bundle over, over the Riemann surface. In the Riemann surface, and at, at, every, around, at point, every point is attached to a copy of SO2, which is this, this SO2. So it's some, and, and this picture you can also think of as a quotient of the ABS3. So it's a three, it's a three dimensional manifold. Right? Because you have a Riemann surface with a circle at every point. So it's a three manifold, which you can think of as a quotient of ABS3. So the, the, the point of the this space is to put the symmetry back in. Like the Riemann surface has no symmetry, but this this space has the right multiplication by G. So that's the, sorry, I should have said that. That's the main point. That, you can right multiply by G. So Y is a so Y is a conformal measure space. G, G now acts on Y and U is the half measure. It's it's also ergodic because the action is transitive. This three-dimensional geometry we give an example of this is relevant for zero plus one G. Uh yeah, yeah, it it we it, the, the bootstrap equations which are satisfied by the spectra of these objects of, of the of the Riemann surface are the are the one D CSD bootstrap equations. So you want like finite co-volume for the gamma and you have a probability there. Good, good, good. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. So this if I want this, which I think I want usually, but you can you can also realize if you want. If you want that, then you, you want to find out. And do you care if you get a certain thing when you quotient or um, no. compact manifold stuff? The, the kind of bounds that we derive are more effective for the compact cases. But they are, in the, kind of the identities, in both of equations, they also apply to the non compact cases. So that we haven't really been able to use them for anything interesting. Okay, so so hypothetically, there could be some interesting relation between the spectra of the Laplacian and these hyperbolic manifolds and the spectra of CSDs, which would be kind of cool because the spectra of hyperbolic manifolds are, are very are chaotic. They are not there are no, no close formulas for them. So chaotic sets with random matrix statistics, and we can we can sort of 
you can see that they arise naturally in this in the presence of this control of action. So, so maybe there's some interesting connection to the chaos in CMA. All right, so what, what do I mean by the spectrum? Maybe I should have raised this here. Okay, so from now on, most of what I'm going to say applies to all transform measure spaces, whether or not they arise from CFDs from hyperbolic measure. Maybe I should summarize. So, so far, the summary is that there is a general definition of what a conform measure space is, and I've given you two classes of examples. One class of examples is CFD positive negos, and the other class of examples is the space Y attached to any hyperbolic manifold. This is a much simpler thing than the space for a CFD, the finite dimensional manifold. And from now on, what I'm going to say will apply to both of these examples. So to any, to any other thing that satisfies this, that conforms to the definition. So spectrum, spectrum of a control measure space uh, So this, to get the spectrum, you just consider this canonical L2 space attached to a to any measure space. And so it's a space of L2 functions, space of observables. Which have a finite norm. Speaking um, for this norm, norm is just the R integral. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of lost. So I should think of Y as particular field configuration. Why is this is the space of all field configurations? Yeah, but like uh, when you write oh, oh, so the small one, small yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so right. that's a particular field configuration. For instance, I can think of it as a function on my space, Euclidean space. Is that right? Or should I? Uh, um, and uh, yeah. so your you you said an observable is a map from these functions to. Complex numbers. That's that's uh, how we how you define observables in the in the setting of path and technology. Here, uh, to follow up on that question, we give a sort of elementary school level example of what these variables mean in terms of points or particles or whatever it is. You so can translate them into observables. Okay, an observable. It, 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 let me ask you this: yeah. this may be beyond what we can do. Take some any experiment that we want with proton proton scale, whatever. Okay, what are the observables we want? Different cross section and so on and so on. What of those quantities that we talk about in the elementary uh, particle physics course are identified with the variables you write down? Is that possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the observ I mean, the observables are are correlation functions of local operators in the vacuum. So you, you, you start with a vacuum and then you can pass and you can insert a bunch of, a bunch of local operators. I guess maybe the. Sorry, the, this, this term really confuses me. Observable in quantum mechanics is a self adjoint operator. We do say that colloquially in high energy yeah. physics that observable is a correlation function, but I'm not sure what that means. I, if I, I do no, 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 cut no. a Euclidean <laughs> dolphin, and now I know. I do have a Hilbert space yeah. or else. Yeah, so I'm in a setting where I haven't introduced any Hilbert space. I mean, you you don't you don't need a Hilbert space. You don't need you don't need local you don't need operators acting on a Hilbert space to talk about path integrals. I, I understand that. So I, I guess when we say observable, then we mean something a little more abstract, which is yeah. basically, uh, yeah, you define well, it. It's it's a, it's a function from the space of fields to. I mean, it's a function that you can integrate on, but especially about integration. Should, should, should I think of this like an example of yes. such f could be a point in space time? I mean, the, so that's the simplest, what... simplest example. So if, if you're in a CFD setting, yeah, then the simplest f <laughs> is basic, 
for something like this. It's like integral of some function f. So this catalog is parameterized by little f. Yes. Perfect. So little f is a map from R D to say real numbers, or complex numbers, whatever you want. And if you if you if you can think of your puzzling as a as an integra integral over some some distributions phi, yeah, then this is this is an observable, right? To, to any field configuration, it assigns a number. I see. So we usually write yeah. it as phi of f. Um, yeah, yeah. That, 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 I see. Not not all. Right. But 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 in my setting, all of these things commute each other. <laughs> they are they are. Sure. That that's yeah. not a that's not yeah. a problem. Yeah, so, so yeah, sometimes people would write it as phi of f, but I, I don't really want to do that because it would it would be confusing. But if you're, you're right, you can say phi of f. And uh, now, what is the spectrum of the spec? So the, the point is that for a conformal measure space, this is a unit representation. Of this is Hilbert space, right? Or Hilbert, so it means a Hilbert space, but it it's not the Hilbert space of the quantum field theory. It's it's a different Hilbert space. V is a unit representation of V. <laughs> which means you can decompose it into irreducible representations of G. And that's that's the main that's that's how you get the spectrum. So V. Yeah, v, v, you can write as a as a direct sum of irreducible representations. These are all infinite dimensional representations, oh, except for the trivial one. <laughs> so now for the for the rest of the talk, it's it's key to understand to say a few few more words about the unitary irreducible representations of this this group. Okay, these these sum of representations. Of the, of, the, of the space of what? It's it's a space of it's a space of observables. It's it's a space of observables of these of these L two observables. Yeah. Yeah, so for, for, yeah, for, for example, these observables. <laughs> it's a phi. It's some kind of an elementary field. Then these observables transform into each other by conformal transformation because conformal transformations act on the phi field. So this this is actually a single copy of an the irreducible representation that's known as the complementary series. Okay, so good. Suppose you you've written down an integral, you get some answer. What is that in some some actual example? What what have you evaluated? That's related to possible well, experiment. Well, the, this this thing yeah. this thing is very abstract. So th this is just an observable. What you what you want what you're asking for are expectation values of observables. So and that point is an observable, and I want yeah. This this is this is not an expectation value yet, but you can. So let's call this f of f. Okay. And then you can compute well the correlation functions of these observables. Say f of f one. This will this turn out. And the CFT has to vanish because one point functions vanish from the filters. And a two point function is already interesting. <laughs> See, the two point function is not, is not in this case, like a double integral over all of space of f of one x one, f two x two times the two point function in a constant field theory, just one over x one minus x two to the power of two delta phi. Okay, so it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit boring because. Because two point function is fixed by just by conformal invariance in a CFT. You know, in a more general QFT, a two point function uh, is, is not is not just fixed, but in this case it is. So we get, but, but you have to learn something. You learn the scaling dimension of a two point function. Does that was that helpful? It's getting. Uh, I'm not an expert in this. Yeah. I'm not a good candidate to judge, but uh, I'm trying to form a picture. Of something that's more related to phenomenology, which is more what I'm doing. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> Sorry, and uh, your apps, do you you say yeah. any functions from Y to C? So, is it dual space of Y? Well, you, so, oh, for, 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 this, for this to be in the yeah. L2 space, 
there's some constraint on the s, but basically, this oh, sorry, you said this is also. So, no. this, well, it's not an L2 function. It's, it's a function for which this is a finite number. <laughs> Such functions form a Hilbert space. So this is a, this is a norm. This is a, well, it, it's yeah, not going to be equal to F2. You have an inner product. Yeah. And this is the inner product. This would never be the case. When you say the case, is this a spatial space including or excluding would be a time variable? It's including the time variable. And I'm, I, I'm using the Euclidean time. Okay, so you do like x four is ICT. It's it's that it's that kind of time. I mean, yes, it's, it's yeah, time yeah. measured in exactly. All right, so x x t. Yeah, my is I I. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So also, also your norm is defined using that measure. Yeah. So it has a carry the index in right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's that's right. Yeah. It's, it's... Okay. But by the way, this this. So just a few words about ir irreducible representations of, of G. There's a whole theory which is of great interest in mathematics, but it's yeah. by now yeah. there's a classification of ir all irreducible representations of this group. So a few more few words about it. There is, of course, a trivial representation. The unitary irreps of G. There's a trivial representation. <clears throat> trivial, which is the one dimensional, just think of the complex numbers. And this ergodicity, of it, the x in four, is equivalent to the statement that this one appears precisely once in D. So we can we can write this decomposition. And ergodicity is the statement that C appears precisely once in a year, and also together with the D. So if, if, if it's not a problem in this space, then it doesn't appear. There's a problem space that appears, and I'm just making sure it appears. Oh, no, more. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, it's a similar question. In this world, time only appears such as it does as x squared over ICT. It's treated as a Cartesian or Euclidean coordinate yes. in that sense. And you have the freedom, if you wish, to put that in with different a different sign or whatever. It's, it's a Cartesian. Time, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you can decomplete this at some point, make it uh, uh, identify with actual variables in some actual experiment if you pushed it that far. Yeah, yeah. principle. In principle, yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Not everything is confirmed. Yeah. You, know, you, you probably don't care too much about yeah. computer because you like, care about the standard model. When you're up, because there are there are some there are some phenomenological implications of forty C. They haven't really panned out very well. Right. Sorry, you, mu is not invariant under the action G. You're not assuming that. I am. Yeah, definitely. Oh, did he say that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ah, so I think I'm right. <laughs> yeah, it's excellent. Yeah, it's fine. It's AI, but it's the unique it's one, right? It's the unique measure. Isn't that? It's a part of the it's part of the definition. I mean, you mean given are you asking given why is there a unique sigma algebra and mu such that there is an action of G on it? I mean maybe for some why to be true. Uh, I, I don't really want to talk about specific class. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so there is a trivial representation and then there are in principles, principle and complementary series representations, which is how the scaling dimensions are going to come in. All right, so the, the most important class of the entire Arabs of me is the principle and complementary series. And these these are labeled these are labeled by the same set of data as local primary operators in a continuum field tree. So they're labeled by scaling dimension and spin. Where scaling dimension is some complex number, and spin is an error of SOD. And you can realize these p's as the space of the space of functions in R D. So you can. Uh, 
real this small f is the same as the small f I wrote before. This is functions on the maybe I should write rd. To be completely precise, I should write the d-dimensional sphere. So I'm imagining doing the stereographic projection rd to, to sd. So I include point for and infinity. So it's a phase of maps, some maps from the sphere to this. Maybe I should call it the pro. Oh, that's just fine. So so this B, B of pro is the you know, is the finite dimensional vector space, which the underlying vector space for this radius of representation. Mm -hmm. And uh, then how does how does G end? So what, what I'm going to tell you is how does the group act on this F? So we need to make some conformal transformation. It sends the F, this function, to, to, to I'm, just, I'm just going to say that F, if you say time, F transforms like a, like a primary operator. There is some formula. So F transforms like, like a conformal primary. But in this case, f is not an operator. f is just a function. So you take a concrete function and you, try, you move it around using this g with some. Is that is that fine if I say? Have you guys seen transformations of local primary operators and the conformal transformations? But delta is no longer necessarily real, and yeah, it, it won't, won't be real. It, it won't be. Yeah. But for unitarity, it's usually not real. And there is also an inner prime <laughs> on this space, which depends on the value of delta. And uh, the, these representations are unitary, so they are unitary when when delta takes this form, so d with the over two plus i t, where t is real. For this to make sense, I would have to tell you how it actually transforms, but I think you can, you can ask me after that. This is called a principle series. In this case, the inner product on S is just the L2 inner product on RD or on the round scheme. Or alternatively, delta is, is real and in the interval from zero to D over two. And in, in that case, the inner product is the one given by this form, this, this form. So you can see that when delta is less than D over two, this integral converges. So the the singularity here is, is, is not very strong. This it just looks like one over R to the D, oh, something less than D, which means it's, it's an integrable singularity. And that's related to the fact that these representations are unitary between zero and D over two. Any, any delta in the zero Yeah, any real delta gives a rise to such a like irreducible. Okay, so and in, in the rest of the talk, I, I'm, my goal would be to derive the bootstrap equations that were on the on the on the board at the beginning. But I won't have probably much time to do that. So let me just give you the main ingredients. So the picture is that we have a complementary space, and now there's a way to constrain the the spectrum. So to do any to the maker space, you decompose the B into areas of point presentations, and you get some set of deltas. And or else, right? So that's the spectrum. Spectrum of y mu is the set of deltas that arise this way, and it, it can be a discrete set, or it can it can have some continuous parts depending on the specific situation. When you're dealing with a compact hyperbolic manifold, then it's just a discrete set. When dealing with a CFT, there could be some discrete parts, and there could be there is supposed to also be a continuum on the principal series. When you're dealing with a non-compact hyperbolic manifold, then there is a continuum on the principal series, <laughs> which is which comes from this, this Eisenstein series. Okay. 
So, so now when you, when you have such a when 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 this p delta i pro i appears inside your L2 y mu, you can define yeah. you can just you can, you can just define this this map which is similar to a local operator in a in a quantum field theory, which is just the, the G invariant embedding of this representation. So it's it's something it's phi of f, it's phi of i is something that it takes it takes f, so it takes a function a function in R D <laughs> and it it maps it into phi of f. So this is kind of the notation that we must discuss as well. <clears throat> but 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 phi doesn't have to be like a single particle operator necessarily. It's but there, there's a complete basis of these phi's. Basis gives you a basis for this thing. Let me ask you this. I know it would be a little bit unfair. Can you describe some nominal experiment where these transformations would give you the information you wanted to get? Is that, was that too remote from conformal? This? Conformal? Which, which you, you developed this formulas in great detail. Eventually, I presume you want to relate this to some experiment, hypothetically. I mean, down the road. Yeah, maybe. I, so, is, are, are we anywhere near that? I mean, why? No, no, maybe you're not. No, yeah. yeah. Is that enough? <laughs> Shall I explain <I'll>, elaborate? <laughs> uh, we are not. Uh, we are not near that. But the, the goal, for example, a long term goal of this program is to solve the three D model, and the, you know, that's like to learn what is, what are the what is the scaling dimension of the lowest lying relevant operator in the three dimensional model. Yeah, that, that, that's, would, would that make you happy? If, if, if we can do that? Yes, it makes you very happy. I, I think perhaps we could say that yeah, this is more, in, so far, more in line with like statistical physics, yeah. statistical field theory rather than, well, you know, like. No, 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 I understand, but my, my roommate, when I was an office man, was the first postdoc, did icing mod, diamond court, did all of these kinds of things. I'm familiar with the language. I just want to understand. So sometimes, yeah. if, if, if it's, I'm obviously not informing you, but if, if you say, here's a, here's a physics problem, okay, and we're going to go through all this stuff because at the yeah. end, this makes it easy to understand mm -hmm. how to deal with whatever yeah. it's an interdimensionalized model that you want. So I'm just trying to connect this in some preparedness in some way, but I accept your position, which is too many steps. And that's, yeah, yeah, okay, that's, that's fine. Fine. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you can you can actually realize the three is like in boiling water. So if you if you wish, this formalism could teach you something about properties of, of boiling water at the critical point. Yeah, really. Like, All this work applies to taking a better cup of coffee. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right. So that's the these 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 are the these are the uh, local operators. Uh, so you, you already specialize the unitary. You assume unitary to be there is specialized to unitary. Actually, actually no. Yeah, this is a different unitarity. This the unitarity for the Euclidean conformal group, which is always there if you have a measure space. So it's more general in some sense than reflection positivity. So mm -hmm. if you if unitarity in Lorentzian signature is reflection positivity. Sure. And that's a that's a very different constraint. It it, it doesn't appear here. So. So you get what's the physics of this unitarity? It, it's just, it's a positivity of the plasma integral measure. Oh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean it's, it's like not a, a constraint. It's just science. It's a it's a con what? well it's a constraint. It's it's it's, it's a measure constraint. measure positive. Well, yeah, but there there's there are CFTs which don't have that property. Like for example, the Young model. There there are the CFTs that have like complex numbers in the in the in Lagrangian. For that, the Pavnikov measure is not a positive field thing. So this it won't fit inside the program that you set up by it, describing a positive measure. Oh, measure, yeah, yeah, it's very positive. So you cannot get that with unitarity, like you know, for so you cannot get what, what do you mean? Like if you give unity one that you get from like positive, and you get this from. Um, well, usual unitarity is an additional constraint on top of what I'm describing today. And you could imagine putting it in as an extra constraint, but so far it hasn't played any role. But it's it's not like incompatible. Yeah. There, there, are, there are CFTs which probably conform to this, but they are not reflection positive. 
There may be also a reflection to the CFDs, which do not really admit the description. The any source of graphing mails that doesn't have any of these low lying complementary series operators. And I think those are probably important. Yeah. Is it fair to say if you don't have reflection positivity, the model is statistical field theory, but with no clear like space time CFD. Sorry, sorry, I, I just saying that when, when it's not, it doesn't have reflection positivity, is it fair to say you're focused on statistical field theories and not space time CFD? Yeah, yeah, but the, the, the nice thing is that some statistical field theories actually give rise to space time CFDs. The ones that are those are the reflection positive. Reflection positive, yes. Yeah. So I am almost halfway through my talk, and not quite. Um right, so well let, let me give you a like yeah. telegraphic summary of the rest. This is the spectrum. There is a natural way to okay. now you can you can talk about correlation functions. These things and the point with f i of f1, phi j of 2. For example, two point function. The two point function is going to look like two point function in a CFT. So, this is already some things I wrote on the blackboard. Should we put a scalar case? And you can also talk about three point functions. So when you do when you do three of them, i, j, k, this defines for you the c, i, j, k, the structure constants. And now it's going to be a triple integral. Well, it's a triple integral, again, something that's also fixed by conformal invariance. So the, 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 key, the key property is that for these representations, and delta one, delta one row one, Delta two, delta two zero. For, for the for mathematician in the audience, the, the key property that the using is that these representations have a unique trilinear function on them, so a unique invariant. And you're asking, what is the space of invariant maps from this product of smooth vectors in these triple representations? One dimensional that that defines for me the CIJ case. So for, for any IJK, there is some structure which is sort of independent of the specific measure space, it just corresponds to this unique map times the overall number, and the overall number is the CIJK, which does depend on the specific measure space and the choice of IJK. This, this, is, this is just a different way of saying that the three point functions are fixed by conformal invariance. And, and the, C, the same CIJ case also appear when you do this, right? Now, now you can multiply observables. So you can take pi, of, pi i f1, pi j f2. This is an observable. And if it's when it's L2, you can decompose it. Into the complete set of observables in your in your Hilbert space, and this defines for you the OP. The structure of the OP is exactly the same as in a in a CFD. And finally, you can implement a source. You can just write an source associated with of multiplication is a constraint on the CIJK and the spectrum. So, so say that it's going to be like that. This really comes from looking at the four point function on the product of four observables, respective to value, and using this, using the OPE in two different ways. You're doing the OPE like that, or doing the OPE like that. And this, this gives you some. I mean, it just reproduces the, exactly the same equation that I wrote down on the whiteboard before CIJM, CKLM, times essentially the conformal block, which I am. Oops. 
I O M what is an M? So for each IJKL, you get some infinite set of constraints because because the space of X is infinite dimensional. So you, you can sort of yeah, but by by varying this first these these four functions, you can get infinite dynamic constraints for each fixed IJKL, and there are also infinite measures of the IJKLs themselves. It's a very complicated set of constraints with respect to the apps. And the um short on time, so let me just show you some results. So okay, now what what have we done so far? We find conformator space, and for each such conformator space, there is a spectrum of deltas and CIJKs, and the spectral data needs to satisfy some constraints. Okay. Maybe this set of, this set of constraint is is, ne is like necessary and sufficient. I'm not really sure. It'd be interesting to talk, to talk about it, whether this actually uniquely characterizes conformator space with these constraints. But now, now let's apply these ideas to the example of hyperbolic manifolds. In that case, this. Uh, can I ask yeah. a basic question? Yeah. So, this conformal block, how do you see it depends on X? Uh, so, good, good, good. Yeah. We really, this thing is not really equal to that, but yeah. it's equal to that, the integral of this against the F1, F2, F3, uh -huh. F4. Okay. So, this depends on X1, X2, X3, X4. You multiply against these four test functions and integrate. Okay. So, it's like a like a bootstrap equation integrated against four test functions. Okay, that's it. Okay, so now let's let's apply this to hyperbolic manifolds. And we 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 wrote a paper last year, two years ago, where we did the two-dimensional hyperbolic manifolds and got some nice bounds on spectrum Laplacian. But I don't really want to talk about that now. So I want to show you some new result, which is Related to hyperbolic three manifolds, where so hyperbolic three manifolds is the case B equal to, and there rho is a representation of and so two. So it is a it's a it's an integer it's an integer which is which you can call spin. So for each for each j, there is some spectrum of delta i for the j. For j equals zero, the spectrum of delta i is related to spectrum of the Laplacian on the hyperbolic map. So the, the Laplacian eigenvalue is like delta times two minus delta. See that for the for the principal and complementary series, this precisely ranges from zero to, to infinity. And for for j greater than zero, it's related. The spectrum is related to 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 such to to, to so some tender fields on the manifold which are divergence free and are eigenfunctions of the curl operator. So in three dimensions, there is a curl operator. It, it, it's basically some something like it's basically a spectrum of the Laplacian, not on scalar functions, but on vector fields and tender fields and so on, where the, the rank is controlled by J. So we have this here's the theta, lambda i zero, which are the scalar lambdas, and the spinning lambda. Does for, for and using this, these, these constraints, you can set up some linear programs and prove bounds for various bounds in the space of lambdas. So the, the thing that I'm, I'm going to show you now is the is the following is the following plot. Let me. So what, one thing you can do is uh, to prove an upper bound on the lambda one at spin two as a function of lambda one at spin one. But lambda one is the lowest, is the lowest eigenvalue for a given j. Yes. So, but by by studying this four-point function where the fi corresponds to the lowest. Lowest uh, g equals one eigenfunction. Get an essence of constraint. And these things just become squares. So there's some positivity that's being exploited. And you can show you can show these constraints can only be satisfied if if there is a if, if lambda one two 
satisfies an upper bound. So everything above the upper bound is excluded. You know, if you can rotate. So my, my laptop is is always bad. Can I have, can I get the charger? Yes, I do. It was almost full when I had it on the end. This didn't slow down for the whole time. And maybe maybe are there any questions while my laptop is being resurrected? Yeah, actually. So uh, you you often talk about these chiral. Well, you know, H and H bar. Here you're just like forgetting about that. You're working with H plus H bar, which is your delta, and H minus H bar, which is your spin, right? For not forging better potential chiral operators. Well, there, there is a there is a version of there is a chirality. It's just a change of variables. You can either work with H and H bar, you can work with delta and J, and there is a one to one correspondence. And the operator is parallel. When you have a CFT which is not, which is which is parity invariant, then operators come in pairs. H H bar, H bar H. So in other words, delta J, delta minus J. Here, uh, this is also okay. And if, if the CFT is not chiral, then there could be a delta J without just delta minus J. And that's also true here. So there are the hyperbolic three manifolds which are not chiral, that have an inversion symmetry, and there these eigenvalues always appear in pairs, delta that's J. It. But in fact, the, the smallest hyperbolic manifold is Cairo, the least manifold. Okay. Yes. Uh, at what step if you go from context to the context? Uh, yeah, it's good. So the, some some subset of these delta and three would work out this real. It's a uh, Press power again. Oh, I think it doesn't want to work now. Oops. Uh, I think the problem is my, my laptop is just. No, I think there's something wrong. No, no. You, 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 you must secretly destroy the, the <laughs> projection. <laughs> it should bring green. It should. I said it brings here. Oh, there we go. No, 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 not here. Now we could, yeah. <laughs> Oops. So, uh, it goes on that. Uh, very by don't that there. Yeah, but you were asking about the real deltas. So, in a reflection positive CFT, the delta should be real, and it's greater than some bound. When when you have a CFT with deltas, with some deltas in this complementary series, then they show up on this vector space as a quantity of a complementary series which is real, where the deltas are real. When uh, and, and all the other all the other operators that are above the over two, they will show up as resonances. So they will kind of show up as as poles. So the, there's for the continuum there's always a continuum on the principal series, and you can go from the continuum from the principal series to discrete contribution from the real axis by deforming the contour. Like a, basically, you pull, you take the vertical contour of the principal series and you pick up the poles on the real axis. The formula for lambda zero with sub, uh, super script zero is familiar from scalars in ADS. Uh, it's yeah, square yeah. for scalars. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's just a, it's just it's a customer uh -huh. yeah. And there are many, probably, I know, I'm not saying there are, but maybe there are, you can obtain many hyperbolic manifold by identifications of ADS. For example, if I remember BCD black hole, I think it's kind of funny identity. That's, that's right, yeah, that's right. So obesity black hole is an example of this of this gamma, uh -huh. gamma more cheek, but it's a, it is an example that doesn't have a finite volume. I see. Because there is a boundary at infinity. So you cannot normalize this thing to have mu equivalent like mu one. But you can still ask about a spectrum. It's probably it's some continuous spectrum, which is a, some subset. So this oh yeah, it's a, I haven't thought much about it. Spectrum is black hole. Spectrum. It's like asking what is this. This set of masses. 
what, what is the spectrum when it tries to decouple the space of functions? I think it's like all. It looks like my laptop is not waking up, so let me just let me just draw a big picture on the whiteboard. Maybe it's the way it's up. So we can go to the bound, and then you can you can ask where do the hyperbolic manifolds actually live? So hyperbolic three manifolds are discrete. They don't have. Oh, great! So beautiful possibility of the theorems. It says that you know, they, they don't have any small, any small deformation. So it's just like a set of points. And you can ask where do these points live? Okay, so this is the bound. This T is you can it's like lambda is T squared plus one. So this primary is equal to T. We prove this bound. Nothing should be about it, and then we computed the spectrum numerically for many hyperbolic manifolds, and we got this. So they are all they are all below the bound, and they kind of nicely populate the entire region under the bound. And some of them actually come very very close. Supposedly, this Wooster approach can lead to sharp or almost sharp bounds, and it makes you wonder whether these Wooster equations are kind of necessary and sufficient to characterize. And the general components. That's that's all I wanted to say. Thanks. So which crossing was uh, that one that we checked with the whole standard? Uh, it's a so to, to derive this bound, we use crossing of one four point function, which is a four point function for the identical operator, where the operator corresponds to this lowest lying. A spin one mm -hmm. object, and we are putting an upper bound on the open functions of the same operator of the, of the same operator. But it's it's an infinite set of constraints because each each of these certainly is infinite dimensional. So that there's some kind of optimization over this infinite dimensional vector space that that we use to get optimal bounds. Any other questions? We have probably just some conclusions which are skipped, but it's okay. Uh, I'll carry this more so we know. Some, something that's kind of interesting that there are, there are special hyperbolic manifolds which have some number theoretic properties. So that we can think of it as like a, an enhancement of the symmetry. You can kind of think about think of it as basically considering this G not just over real numbers but also over these theoretic numbers. So I, this is something that we are thinking about now is how how these number theoretic examples uh, play play out like is there some kind of bootstrap over the attic numbers as opposed to real numbers and i already mentioned the connection to chaos that these these, these spectra are, are known to be chaotic and could there be connection to chaos in cfds so who is the limit spectra are chaotic um is for, for example you can ask about the correlation between the nearest nearest eigenvalues so for a fixed hyperbolic manifold a fixed spin at sufficiently high energy, or you can Excellent. average over all the nearest pairs and ask what is the statistics on the space. Is there some sort of like Wigner uh, distribution, Servines, Wigner Servines, yeah. and implies like hidden valley gaps? Yes, yes, yes. I, I'm not sure what is actually what is proven and what is just conjecture. Any other questions? Is it clear that you can only get like one between lambda one one lambda one two? Not like lambda one like why you can get it one with lambda one zero? Uh, we we can, but it's it's not as impressive as this picture. So <laughs> I didn't I didn't show it there. Yeah, we uh this is somehow the only the only situation that we found where the bound is is sharp or nearly sharp for the for the other cases. The bound is true for all the hyperbolic manifolds we were able to compute, but there, there is always some pretty big gap. Mm -hmm. 
I could have I could have encoded it. Yeah, so in the CMP setting, or, or the scalar bounds are very impressive. Right? Or, or the, like the bounds on the first scalar as a function of the second scalar or the other way around. It's sharp for 3D Eisen model for it, pretty much that. But, you know, that's why people got excited about the booster. For, for example, with Green Life, we have to go to higher models of J. Yeah. Uh, this one, this might be actually be somewhat vague, but I'm sort of confused about the connection between you presented it in a way that you were saying that whatever you say, so the the the, the language of OP coefficients and uh, um, OP coefficients and conformal dimensions is a standard story that we're all told, and the path integral picture is not quite what we usually describe. Use the language we usually use yes. to describe CFDs, but you 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 sort of said that these two pictures are complementary. Now the thing that confuses me is that there's also this lore, which I'm not an expert on, mm -hmm. that people say not every uh, not every quantum field theory should will have a Lagrangian interaction principle. So. There are often that that sometimes has to do with their existence of constraints, but here, yeah, what is it? What's the judgment call here? What's the law here? And so I think the, the issue of existence of this measure space is not it's not the same issue as the existence of an action or or a, a, a Lagrangian because a action is something that you use to go from a classical theory to a quantum theory. And when people say that some quantum theories don't really have a Lagrangian, they just mean that. They don't arise from quantization of the classical theory. But, but here there is no classical theory. Like this, this measure space is the quant is the, the quantum object. You know, the, the measure, the measure is not always e to the minus s times some nice measure or, or, or on, on space of functions. You, 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 am I making sense? Like you, you shouldn't you shouldn't think of this as like a classical thing. I, I guess what, what another way of saying is that like the, the, it's not quite clear to me that there should always there will always be a measure measurable space. It's yeah, that's that's not I, I don't think I agree. The, the picture that, no, that you're you're advocating in CFDs is I'm, I'm, ought to be I'm, I think that in CFDs that admit these complementary series operators, there you then it's true. Because then, then you can you can sort of build this V by sort of the complementary series operator and taking products more and more and more of them. Then you can still build all of the observables this way. So for example, for the 3 ising model, for the ON models, there are always these light fields. And then the picture is probably correct, although nobody has constructed the Y mu for them. For something like an equals process of males, okay. One issue is fermions. How do you how do you even do fermion path integrals and what's the right measure? Space picture for them. I'm not really sure, but 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 these issues are kind of independent of of the question of you know having an action. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. but but yeah. That, uh, it's not, that that's not an issue of action either. It's about constraints, explicit constraints in the path integral. Because if you give a measure, yeah, you mean, you mean like implication, like for for instance, like, like for example, self duality of the. You 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 do have a self self dual uh self self dual field string, mm -hmm. right? Those are examples of these non-action theories. Mm -hmm. There's an extra constraint that you have to impose somehow. Yeah. That's a good question. I, I haven't thought much about how to actually construct these things from right, so this Any last questions? If not, let's thank Dalmo again. So can I, like, well, we're, we're going to discuss this in a lot more detail. Uh, yeah. uh, this, this, uh, it's very similar. Somehow similar. Very similar in structure to what we do in upper yeah, down. Yeah. So, but there's some way to the way. I, yeah, uh, I, I'll I'll bring bring the because we actually start with the space of F. The space.
Um, and then we view the field uh, configuration, uh, what we call field configuration, the, the dual space. Basically, um, what of course, happens you take the dual space. So, reference. for example, the spin yeah. functions are going to be uh, worse, very nice, classified, it's infinitely differentiable, uh, and also exponentially. Uh, uh, the dual space of that is going to be large. It's going to be compared to spin. So, there are an axon of the field compacts now. Side. Mm -hmm. So the restricted representation there. If you take the space of the dual space of temporary so that thing is wild. Like the right. you so you start with this, yes. and then you split the functions of the uh, space of here. It's all okay. but you're going to take uh, all functions. I see. Is that one of the two business for SO, right? Well, I mean, when you look at SO mm -hmm. one, which I guess is okay because you you can you really can start with that. get a, a mm -hmm. group on its rotation space of this yeah. uh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So here, so I guess there's no understanding. There's no uh, yeah. I see. An irrational. But this is this is not like a well, it's just like a irrational change of perspective that should be fundamentally. Oh, yeah. But that, that's oh, like something that was pretty confusing. Okay, okay. Oh uh, no, I see. Okay, that's very yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's very good. Is, uh, but what about like if we take the SO for the data construction, you know what we are doing? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Is it possible? Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, they're, they're thinking about kind of different regime lists. Oh, okay. yeah. With the figure construction, you're thinking about like non measure things thing for one thing. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, in a sense, like you're uh, eligible, uh, but we. Because you the, which is kind of related to algebra methods that you can think about. Um, right. that, that's where you start. That's where the algebra yeah. is. Basically, and the, what you're calling field configuration, the boundary of the space, yeah. space of all the data here. Yeah. Uh -huh. You pick the mu, uh, right? right? Like, oh, that's a sort of create this model. Uh, mm -hmm. this mu, and so, I'll for the algebra. It's very cool. Exactly. We never, we never, Right. On this boundary. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the normal spherical measure there. Mm -hmm. Right. So the, the key issue. That's those are those are all like small things. The key right. issue is like uh, I see, I see. so uh, okay. because like okay, you have to be careful with the percent of our system. This is the thing. This is the phase feature here when you're looking at a continuous. So for instance, if you have transformation, you're doing a unitary rapidly continuous group, mm -hmm. it's always type one. Everything decomposes this is kind of mm -hmm. old, let's say your 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 space mm -hmm. so connected so let's say you it's down the always your one uh, so uh, so uh, so uh, so uh, you're going in space right yeah. so you're yeah. boundless okay okay yeah and you can't really get it done so yeah. how would you yeah. Yeah. what would you say actually like let's say you repeat everything you said right present some a single bound for your destruction Right, so you might get those actions are all tight. Your function in your space, yeah. There were two, there were some two spaces which were not in the One was the manifold or the smile, and the other one was the RD. This one is RD is the one I'm talking about. Can you do it like on record? Like RD Takasaki below that. This is where it's the palace. This is below that. Okay. What happens if you do that? Yeah, it's it's just a pair of the I mean, how would it you never get it's such a setup in here? Everything is like I was discussing with David, it's not that it's just like people. Does it not have to be final? Um, yeah. Yeah. So choosing this locally compact and choosing choosing this boundary kind of corresponds to breaking the conformal group to a subgroup. Yeah, break it. From SO1 to D plus one, I'll say SO1 to D. That's if you pick a very nice boundary. Yeah, if you have a conformal boundary. And there you can do something similar, you can do something similar to hyperbolic manifold, which does the same thing, which is picking uh submanifold. Geodesic submanifold. It works. If you had a, if we are in a two dimensional one, so you have some Riemann surface, you can look at geodesic. And there's a geo, there's, there's an SO one comma one acting on the geodesic, and I think if you basically you, you you can you can kind of repeat, you can pretty much repeat what I said, but now thinking about functions. 
So there are various natural operations you can do. You can take an eigenfunction of Laplace with the under even surface and restrict it. So there's a fraction of restriction with your debit. 